Hey, welcome to Dan's Model Works, and we're back with part six. Is this part six? Yes. Part six of the Dodge something or other. Um, it appears to be some sort of heavy truck. <clears throat> Knock the layers of dust off it. It seems like it's been so long since I've worked on this thing. I think it's going to be a tow truck. Yeah, that's it. A tow truck. That's the plan. When we left off, I'd converted it from dual headlights to singles. And this time around, let's see if we can get the interior in and maybe start working on the uh, on the on the bed itself. So work has been happening. As you can see, I've started painting the interior. The uh, dashboard I kind of did an off-white color, actually talking model master sand the uh, inside of the truck seemed to be painted a mixture of cream and and gray so I'm tending to keep to those sorts of colors and I still haven't painted the inside of the gauge as gloss black but you can see what I'm aiming for here now I don't know if I'm gonna be able to pull it off but if we look really really carefully here let's try focusing in the toolmaker has actually managed to engrave the placard showing the gear change um, pattern that was on the real truck. I'm going to flash up a little picture here just showing that, hopefully. And uh, so I don't know if I'm going to be able to pull off painting and dry brushing that but it gives you some idea of the level of um, tool making that went, that went into this. Now one thing I'm gonna have to do and I noticed this after I was starting to do the painting is when we put the interior in, let's see if we can get a good focus here, there's actually quite a bit of loose space so what I'm going to do is I'm going to super glue a strip of styrene on around the outside of this. Then once that's set up nice and strong, I'm going to laminate layers of styrene on top of it using styrene cement until I've built it up so that we've got a very, very close fit, almost an exact fit in here. And because otherwise there's just a little bit too much play inside here. You can you can see it kind of rattling around. I'd like to take that up. So I uh, took a nap right after work and then I got up maybe about two and a bit hours later and finally have some energy. So you can see I've wrapped the uh, the, the styrene around the outside, and this is just 10,000 styrene. And the only reason I'm using a, a thin piece of styrene is this way. I can get a, a good bond onto the resin, and then I can just build it up with layer after layer of uh, probably slightly thicker, maybe 2,000 styrene until I build it up to the size I'm going to need. So that's what's going on here. We got the, the styrene wrapped around there, and I'm going to build it up until I get a good fit inside here it's not quite so loose all right um you can see i've started building up the the front on either side because the cab is actually a little wider at the front than it is at the back so what i'm doing is i'm just adding more layers here and nobody's ever going to see this this is just so that the cab fits inside or the the it's not really a bucket. The L fits inside the cab a little bit tighter and it's not going to be rattling around. Um, so um, I'm bulking up the front on either side and then I'm going to put another wrapper all the way around. I'm going to see how it fits. I'm just going to keep adding to it that way. So many, many layers of styrene later. I ended up just going with the 10,000 styrene just because I could, it really, um, 
you, you can bend it quite easily and you don't end up with any gaps or anything like that. And you can see how I've added it to the original base here. And there's areas that had to be thicker here and there. And I also did right here. Now I'm going to smooth this out a little bit. And, but basically when we put this in the cab now, and I've also added a piece here at the back because to get this in where you wanted it to, it left a gap at the back. So as I put this in, you can see it's no longer just kind of rattling around. It actually fits in here fairly tight. Now I do still need to do a little bit of filing because this doesn't want to sit in here quite level, but we're getting close. If you look in now to the dashboard, it's no longer there's this huge gap or anything there. And as I try to get a good view here, but you can see now it looks like it's actually fits in here solidly instead of floating, which is basically what it was doing before. So using a whole pile of layers of styrene, and I mean, really it didn't, it wasn't more than about a couple inches off of a sheet of 10,000 styrene anyway. But it gave me a lot of controllability on how I built it up. And basically this fills in the gap behind the dashboard and it also provides something that, um, you know, kind of sits under here under the cowl. So it only took a couple of days and I wasn't even really working on it that much. I'd put on like 10 or 15 strips and then, you know, go to bed or something like that. But that was something that was bothering me and now it's been taken care of. So what you're looking at here is what surrender looks like. The previous episode, I think it was the previous episode, I had detailed how I had put weather stripping, well, it was just styrene, all the way along. And I had it actually fairly, fairly uh, far out. And then I had another piece of smaller styrene in behind. And the idea was, is instead of just gluing the acetate up on the inside, I was actually going to cut it very accurately and pop it in between those two pieces of styrene. And I noted at the time, and other people in the comments said, geez, you're really going to have to cut that accurately. And I, I knew that. I said it was going to have to be very, very accurate. So it's not just how accurate that piece of acetate was going to have to be cut. It was also, while just trying to test fit a piece of acetate in there, I discovered that what I needed was six independently controlled hands, all of which were capable of fitting inside the cab at the same time. And I've only got two hands, and they're, they're pretty big and clunky. So I lost track of how many attempts I had made at cutting that. I'd actually done two before I finished the previous episode, and I'd done at least one more. And it occurred to me one or two days ago that that was one of these, that was one of the reasons why I wasn't working on this as much as I wanted to, because I needed to get this windshield at least fitted before I could work on putting the air cleaner on and the lube finer and all the other details and everything that were going to be on the outside of this and painting it. I was going to have to have fit a piece of acetate before I could do any of that. Because while wrestling with it, you know darn well they'd knock all that stuff off. So I gave up. I surrendered. I was like, you know what? Uh, I don't know how I'm going to be able to get these big ham-fisted hands in there. As it is, I think, in order to do it their way and just glue it on the inside is still going to be difficult. But at least I can see that as being doable. I say that today. So what I did yesterday is I sprayed a bunch of debonder on my lovingly applied weather stripping. I took it all off. And then, and of course, the, the, the second weather stripping I put in, of course, didn't go on nearly as smoothly, but 
if you look at it, you can see it's basically hard up against the inside of the opening so that when I put acetate in there, it'll still have a tendency to look like weather stripping going up against the glass. I still think it's worth having the weather stripping in there. Um, but it's not quite the effect I was originally looking for. Now what we're looking at right here is the inside of the door panels. Now on the real truck there was kind of a, a raised metal panel in the middle of the door. Quite a bit smaller than the, the full size of the inside of the door. And on this part was the window winders, the uh, latches to open the door, and of course a handle slash armrest. So the armrests are just basically chunks of styrene that I've carved. And you can see there's a little bit of a, of a hook there to get your 125th scale hand into. The handles themselves, um, I just basically used the mold that Natasha and I created a couple months ago. A couple months ago, I think nine months ago, we created this mold uh, so we could do window winders. And I know that the, the latches for opening the door shouldn't have a little knobby on them, but this was handy and I figured it's better than having nothing at all. If you want to see the video on making improved window winders for your models, somewhere around here there should be a link to that video. Maybe you can show it some love. It hasn't been doing too well. So these will be glued to the inside of the doors. There's a shot of the door panels inside. And let's see if I can focus in on it. Um, hopefully you can see I've scribed basically the, the, the back of the door right here. Right there. Did that on both sides. Not going to so much worry about the, the front door seam. But the back I wanted to have in because it's probably going to be a little bit more vo uh, visible. Now in this shot, if I can get the light just right, you can see the various door handles and things. So I think it was worth putting those in there. And of course, we've also got the air cleaner on. And it's interesting, I had expected there was going to be some sort of bracket holding it in place. I went and checked my photos, and it's just basically a pipe coming out going to the air cleaner. There's not actually any bracket or anything holding it in place. However, the kit molds the part with this kind of a tray here. So even though the truck I photographed didn't have a support, since this tray is molded in, I'm just going to put a couple brackets going over to it. And this is the start of the lube finer which goes on the other side and it actually is going to go there-ish. And that doesn't come in the kit, but it's fairly prominent on the real truck, so I'm going to model that. And I'm just going to set this in place. As you can see, it looks like it's going to sit on there fairly happily. Move it over just a bit. So, progress is being made at a snail's pace. And here is the completed loop finer, glued in position. And if you look at the underside of it, you should see there's two little holes. And that's going to be for the, uh, the hoses. There's two hoses that go from the loop finer. And then they go into a hole that's basically bashed through the, the bottom of the cab there. 
And I'm going to be using just some fine solder to represent those. And there we go. That's the scratch belt loop finder and the uh, two hoses going down from it in place. I'm trying to think of what else I need to do before I need to prime this. My plan is, is I'm going to prime it and then I'm going to put on the uh, medium gray. Um, and I'm not going to worry about painting on the blue yet. I'm going to do the blue later. Quite possibly that it might end up being brushed on, I'm not sure. Because I think masking this might be a little difficult. I will decide that at a future date because it's really just the side of the hood and a portion on each door, I believe. So the main thing is, is I want to get this cab done-ish. Um, so that I can move on to the back part here. Because this project just is taking way, 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 way too long. Um, I think the problem is, is I've been trouble having the energy to do anything lately. All I want to do is sleep. So I guess that just must be old age coming up on me or something. So there's our cab after applying some basic automotive gray primer. It actually is, is darker than what it appears here on the camera. I think it's just a combination of the fluorescent light and being in the spray booth, but it's actually darker. So I'm just about to um, paint it Tester's uh, Model Master Gloss Gull Gray, which I think is pretty close to what we want it to be. So I think I had probably about oh, 80, 90 percent of the finish coat on, and I'm not happy with it. It just looks a little too light. Even off the camera, it looks a little too light. So I'm going to take the same color I use, and I'm going to add a little bit of black to it and see if I can drag it down to the, the sort of color we need. This just looks just a bit too light. It looks more off-white than it does gray. So... So you can see the end of the paintbrush, that's the new paint color, as compared to the lid. And it is quite a bit darker, but I don't like it's that extreme, and it definitely has a more of a gray cast to it than the... Uh, great, now i got to wipe out the lid. <laughs> it definitely has more of a gray cast to it than the, um, than the original color. Now I know on camera it doesn't really look any darker, but it is considerably darker. And I think it's pretty much the color I want it. Uh, of course I will be applying the blue stripe on the side a little bit later. That's it, drop it. So, one more thing to do before I wrap up this episode, and that's I'm going to be painting the interior. So the interior is not glued in and it probably won't be glued in until very shortly before the completion of the model but you can certainly see that it does fit in here and there's there's no rattling or anything like that and it's painted sand inside. Now I know the truck that we're modeling the interior was a mixture of sand and light gray and cream, but I thought I'd just go with the sand color overall. So this is pretty much going to wrap it up for this installment. I purchased some styrene tread plate just the other day so I can start working on the bed. So it'll finally start looking like a a tow truck or a truck that has some sort of a job to do. So, thanks for watching. Until next time, just keep on modeling.